Nobody's in a hurry to get older. Right? Nobody wants to get older. They're not in a hurry to get older, Mona. But we're all getting older. As I sit here, every second that ticks, I'm older. That's very true. I think there's a, the alternative to getting older is probably a worse option. So let's, it's all in your perspective, I guess. Yeah. And the reason I bring that up, Mona Kaiser is the executive director of the Fairborea Seniors Center. Correct. And they have come out with their 2014 annual report, which we're going to go over today. Yeah. But I promised people I'd get an update on how the, there are a lot of excited people in town about your announcement a couple months ago on this very show. Yes, we did announce it on your show, didn't we, that yeah. we were going forward with it. Well, what we have done so far is um, we have uh, retained the services of a, a capital campaign consultant. We hired them for three months to do a survey community assessment to find out what people believe, um, what they think about the senior center, and you know, is it a positive feeling? Do people believe that if we launched a capital campaign to raise, you know, possibly two million dollars, do they believe that we could be successful? So we did a bunch of interviews. We talked to a bunch of people. We've done a ton of research to gauge the interest in the community. And um, the results of that, I don't have, right. but we um, will be announcing that or having a presentation on that assessment um, on Monday evening, April 20th at 6.30. And I'll be talking more about that and inviting people to come. Of course, our members will be invited, the people that participated in the assessment, and anybody, including yourself, if it interests you, um, will be um, available to attend the presentation of this assessment. So then at, at a couple days later is when the Board of Directors will be um, making the final decision on if we are going to be actually officially launching the capital campaign. So it's not a definite? It is not a definite. It'll be based on the information that we receive on this assessment. So we want to make sure that the community is on board. We have to have everybody on board before we um, go, we're, we're not going to do this and not be successful. So we gotta make sure we're ready. Because bottom line is, your organization has to raise all the funds. Correct, correct. We will be raising all of the money before we go ahead and start the building. Um, because we're a private nonprofit, you know, we're not going to have a mortgage or bonding and all of those things because our funding as a nonprofit, as anybody who is involved in that, changes. You know, one year you may get a nice grant to pay for something, the next year that money may not be there. Um, you may have a high year uh, in your membership dues or the sales at our store downtown. But the next year is not, it, everything can be fluctuating. We're not going to gamble that we're not going to have that money. So we're going to make sure that we have all the money first and pay for it so we don't have a mortgage. You're used to it now, but it's got to be a bit frustrating. The flexibility on that. Well, yeah, the, what you just said, you know, one, you know, the grant's there one year, it's not there the next. <laughs> right. That sort of thing. It's got to be a bit frustrating. It, well, you got to you gotta be really careful. You know, get your budget... Proposing a budget that's reasonable is um, important, and you don't gamble with somebody else's money. You know, it's not like it's my money or my organization. It's the board's money and the membership's money, and so I'm, I'm really conservative that way. We put a real conservative budget together because we don't, you never know. We do have reserve funds, which are um, important. Um, so you do have some things to fall back on so um, so that we don't, uh, we're not going to default. All right. We're going to talk about how things are going at Fashions on Central here shortly. We're discussing mm -hmm. the expansion proposal. Correct. And for those who did not hear the first segment, again, just to reiterate, every nickel that's being raised for this project is being raised for the project. You're not getting any government dollars or anything. Right, right. We do have an agreement with the city of Fairboro. They are going to be providing us the property, which is a significant contribution. Um, right now, we are located on city land, and we, but it's our building and our 
budget and all of our expenses but the city is also then giving us additional property which is adjacent to where we are so i don't want to take away from that contribution the land is expensive but the money that we raise will be putting doing all the site work will be paying for the site work the parking lot the demolition of some of the houses or one of the houses that's next door and then of course the land the building itself and the hope the dream the desire is to have an entrance at a different location correct off of first avenue i always have to be careful first avenue is what what our hope is because division street is so busy really busy and we're at a busy intersection right there at the intersection of central avenue and division it's there's a lot going on there and it's very it's a lot of traffic and it's can be dangerous so if we move our entrance off of first it's quieter people will be able to get in and out of our parking lot easier and then move over to the stop signs which are at the intersection then of division and first so we're talking on the west side of the building correct on the west side yep so our entrance will be over there and the entrance into the parking lot will also be over on first you'll still have the parking across the street to the across yep yep the city owns a lot of parking across the street and so that will be kind of overflow we'll be adding extra parking places you know if the expansion goes through we'll be adding some spots and especially additional um handicap parking we're pretty limited right now in my opinion on the handicap parking so um we'll be adding more handicap spots and then we also hope to have a um, a covered entrance so that people can be dropped off whether it's private persons or bus driving um, under a canopy and then being able to um, get dropped off close to the front door i like the idea of the canopy yeah yeah that we're really missing that it's it's not easy for people, you know, when it's when it's snowing and when it's raining. Yeah, yeah, and people are still coming, and so it'll be easier then and safer for people to get under when it's covered. So maybe we can even have a skyway. A skyway to where? Like a sky <laughs> skyway connecting what? Like the parking lot? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, well, listen. You'd have to have a building to connect it to, well, of course. Yeah, I was, I was thinking. Well, <laughs> you know that. Well, we'll have to keep that in mind, Gordy. We'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, well, that probably you could just toss right yeah, out the window. Okay. All right, I, I'm pretty sure. I was just trying to think of a. Yeah, you know, that'd the be cool. We have here. That's true. Nice. That's true. Maybe like a ramp where people can like park underground or something. There's an idea to have the parking lot underground, like they have yeah. down at the Like at the dope, like, yeah, that's a great idea. All right, well, we got a lot of things to consider. That'd be pretty spendy, though. Yeah, it would be. Think? It would be. The site work is going to cost a lot already, because the, there's a tremendous grade there, an incline um, from the beginning, from the Division Street towards the back of the property, and so that alone is going to be, uh, that alone is going to cost us uh, a little bit of money. And then the ground also is kind of low in some areas, so the site work is going to be significant. Did you hear that? I did. Is there a train running through this, through your uh, studio? No. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. Kind of felt like it there <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> I sure hope not. Yeah. We don't need no trains coming through our studio. Let's tackle the Feral Boria Senior Citizens Annual Report. Before I do that, though, yes. although this is probably part of the report. Yeah. How are things going at Fashions on Central? Fashions on Central is doing well. The transition went from being the clothes closet um, with clothing for men, women, and children to um, women and children only. And the name now is called Fashions on Central. Um, I It's going over wonderfully. For people that haven't been there before, now they'll see a little bit more room. You can get through easier through the racks. We've got our displays a little better, and that's and a uh, children's separate area for our children's clothing so um, I think it's going great people are being really positive about the change people understand why we made the change and um, I can't say enough good things about the volunteers how they're helping us with positive comments on the change so all is well which officially took over when 
Um, we did the, the name, name change at the end of January. I, I can't, don't know the exact date. End of January first, first of February. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't even be included in that. No, no, it's not in. It's not. Um, none of the statistics are in there. But we did talk about it a little bit. Um, but yes, this is a 2015 initiative. Well, you must have sales figures from 2014. Oh, absolutely. Because it's your largest. Absolutely. Point of revenue, right? Absolutely. It is the largest fundraiser that we have at the Senior Center. Um, um, our sales, income sales, um, if you're interested in looking at that page four, income, okay. $76,000. Page four. $76,000 is the gross number. Um, expenses of 40, so our net income, which went to the Senior Center, was $35,000. So, you know, after you pay your staff and your utilities and property taxes. So that may be one salary, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a lot. We own the building. Um, so $76,000 in sales. So that's a big, that's a big downtown business, I think. So it's all income revenue from that. Total funds raised, 62090 uh-huh, in our fundraising category, correct. That doesn't include memberships and that those sorts of things, but fundraising. Um, our fall fund drive was way up this year. We have donations some from people that have their taxes done. Um, our bake sale, that was up also this year. So coffee shop alone, you know, generated a, a net number of um, over $1,100, so... And how does the funeral escort service work, Mona? That's, I don't know if we've talked about yeah, that. Yeah, that's before. that's interesting. In our in it's kind of funny in our in our financial statement, it's listed as escort service. So that's kind of creepy sounding, but uh, it's it's not what people think. But it is funeral escort, and so what that is, it's a it's a partnership or a triad is what they originally called it with the police department, the local funeral homes, and then the senior center. So when there is a funeral. Um, the funeral director will contact our coordinator, Larry Malka, and Larry then gets two volunteers and lines up a, a vehicle that the police department owns. And then the volunteers pick up the car, they go to the funeral, and then they escort the funeral procession from the church or funeral home to the cemetery. So, and there are a lot of different combinations of that, but they do the escort of the funeral procession, you know, making sure everybody safely can get with this slow process um, safely to their destination. There's a charge for this. The funding, the money comes from um, a contribution from the funeral home or the family um, for the service, and it's an optional service. I'm going to make sure people know that it's an optional service, and it's $50, and the money goes directly to the senior center. So it's a it's a, um, the volunteers do the work, but the money comes to us. Okay, you just said it was an optional service. The funeral, the family can choose if they want to have the escort or not. So if they choose not to, they don't have a procession. They, you know, and it'll depend on the circumstances. Yeah, how big it is. Of how, right. No, I understand that. Yeah. So no, it's not a mandatory thing, and so that what we want to make sure people know is that we're not making people give us fifty dollars. So it's an optional thing for the family. But it is fifty dollars. It is. It is. And that raised four thousand three hundred dollars. It did. It did. I don't. If you want to divide that out, you yeah, can. Yeah, a lot of funerals. It, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big. Fu it's a big fundraiser for us. And I think <clears throat> the other nice thing about it, from what I've been told by the police department, is. This allows them to uh, have their officers, you know, continue to do the work that they really need to do right. also. No, you know? it's, a, it's a savings to the city for sure. I, I think it is. I do think they appreciate it. You know, it's a process. We, we screen our volunteers. They have to have a driving um, check. You know, we do a background check on their driving record. There's a, you know, identification process. So, um, because it's a, it's a community service vehicle. At the very front of the Faribault Area Senior Citizens 2014 Annual Report, which I am assuming if people would like to grab a copy of this, you could go down to the Senior Center and get a copy of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're in the process of putting it on our website as well. Um, we just presented this to the board um, 
two weeks ago. So I don't know if it's on the website quite yet, but that we always make it available in that way. Um, so it's brand new. But this is awesome to see 13,556 volunteer hours in 2014, page two. I know, isn't that fabulous? It's fabulous. You know, um, put the minimum wage to that number. John's computing it even as we speak. We used to. Uh, we Actually, used he's falling asleep. <laughs> we used to do that where you take about where where you take the minimum wage and multiply it times that, and um, I kind of lost track of what the minimum wage. What is? minimum wage is? What is minimum wage, stuff. John? John doesn't know. I don't remember. I don't know because that, that's kind of one of those things that everybody's talking about right now. But yeah, if you put minimum wage to that, it went up, didn't it? Yeah, it's like nine something, I think. So. Just use ten dollars an hour. Yeah, there you go. Thirteen thousand five hundred and fifty-six times ten dollars. A hundred and thirty-five thousand. That's a big savings. That's a lot of a lot of assistance. So, and and it's in a lot of different ways. The largest, um, you know, is down at the store at Fashions on Central. Almost six thousand hours just at Fashions on Central in yes, volunteers. even more than the senior dining program. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, a double almost. Which, by the way, you have great food. We do. Down at the senior center. We do. Um, noon meal every day, um, 11.30 is when they serve. It's a su suggested donation of 350 for people that in the qualifying age group. Of 350 for a lunch, and it is dietarily. Yes, nutritionally. It's, it's created by a, uh, a dietitian. It's got um, diabetic options, so if people have a, have special um, dietary restrictions. That's all part of what they consider. Now you don't put any salt in the food for obvious reasons, but that's at the table. If you're not salt restricted in your diet, you can add salt. You can. Pepper. That's that's exactly right. Yeah, and then that, like I said, there's always a, um, an option for people that have diabetes. So their dessert, you know, can be a fresh fruit instead of, you know, pumpkin pie. Which that would be a bummer, but I love fresh fruit though. Yeah, so people do have an option, uh, lots of options in that way, depending on their restrictions. So I've been eating more and more fruit during my lunches. Have uh, you? Yep. yep, I've been a good boy. Tis the Grapes, season. Strawberries. Yeah. Apples. Now we're going to be getting that good fresh fruit again. So. Yep, looking forward to that farmer's market starting up again. Oh, I bet. Central Park. That's true, that's Mona true. Kaiser is with us. She's the executive director of the Fairbury Senior Center. She is our guest this morning on AM Minnesota. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the Hope Center. Erica Staub is stopping in, along with Andy Murphy and Lauren Murphy. And they're going to be doing a fundraiser, I'll bet. Correct. I'm on the board of directors at the Hope Center. You are. I am. I am. I can't tell you how pleased I am to be part of that group. They do great, great work. They do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I have a really a soft spot for the people at the Hope Center. And I'm looking forward to visiting with them tomorrow. Of course, Lauren and Artie are known for the Bluebirds, right? Oh, yes, they are. They Blue just birding. Yes, Lauren just did a program at the Senior Center about Bluebirds, but I also know they work with uh, tables, uh, tour of tables. He knows a lot about Bluebirds. We had a fabulous turnout at the program that he did for us. I think it was a week ago, maybe, two weeks ago. I find it interesting we have a Bluebird organization. Yeah. There's no cardinal that I'm aware of organization. You know? So, John, we should start. A cardinal. What do you think? Well, like, you could get the people from BA to be part of it. Well, that would make perfect sense. They are the Cardinals, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> anyway, that's that's uh, that's the show tomorrow. Next week, by the way, I wanted to plug one week from today, the sheriff will be in the studio, Troy Dunn. So, okay. unfortunately, I'll be on my very best behavior. You know, and he carries a gun. Yes. Yeah. He is the chair of the Beyond the Elbow Ribbon. Show. I'm on that board, too. Why? And what board are you not on? I, I have favorite things. Favorite things. Oak yes, board, chair is. Maple board. Chair. Cherry Oak board. Beyond the Yellow Ribbon is a great organization. They're they got cool stuff going on right now. Yeah, so he's going to get us updated on what's happening. Good with, with that organization. Good. You could do this today, and you'd save me two shows. I. What do you need, Gordy? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, me too. So let's tackle the uh, the Fairbury Senior Citizens. What did we not touch on here? We talked about the fundraising. We talked about the volunteer hours. Oh, the programming. Yes. Wow. 
the number of participants. Oh, I knew you were going to ask that, and I didn't add those up at the bottom, which well, I that's usually okay. do. No, that's fine. Yep. But, but when you look at this, the number of participants, for example, card games are very, very popular. <laughs> it is. And that makes sense, because my parents were big card players. Yeah, and we offer it five days a week, and so um, that's why that number is, is so high. It's kind of a self-run thing. Everybody, you know, they, they come, they've got all the supplies. We pull provide all the supplies and they kind of set up and do their own thing so it's a it's kind of a, a tradition um, all over the card players so um, one of the things that we're finding is that along with the card players we also need space for some of the other programs and so that's what we're looking forward to hopefully being able to do with the uh, with the expansion is being able to do more than one thing at a time. Do you have board games? Do you play board games? You know, we have board games, and we have tried several times over the years to try to get a, other groups to get started, you know, uh, Scrabble or Cribbage and those sorts of things, and we have not had much success with that. Um, so you kind of need somebody that will just kind of get it going and take off with it. But How about Twister? <laughs> <laughs> Twister would be a great idea. In fact, I just cleaned out a closet at my house and I came across a twister, one of those sheet things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dang. All you need is a spinner. You can make your own. That's true. I mean, uh, I not all that hard. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> a twister. <laughs> I wonder how that would go. I don't know. I don't know. You know, um, one of the, uh, speaking of physical activities, we, we just um, are working with the community center do, doing a pickleball workshop. Have you ever heard of pickleball? Yes, I have. I hear it's a very fun game. It is a fabulous game, and it's really the hot thing right now for older older adults. It's kind of a combination of tennis and racquetball and badminton and, you know, those sorts of um, games with the net. Um, we just did a workshop. We filled up that workshop with 14 people, and we're, we're offering a second session. So um, that's all the rage right now. So we're, we're trying to get people you know, to learn how to use it. And you've got these Thanks. video tours of museums and things that I think is just outstanding. Thank you. Thank what a you. great idea. Video conference classes have done really well. We're in the process now of doing one through the Library of Congress. So we're doing a sign-up for that. Um, but we've done author studies. We've done the Smithsonian. We did uh, um, Country Music Hall of Fame. So live presentations from those locations. A person is there showing us and talking to us um, here, sitting in our dining room in Fairbow. And you can ask questions. Absolutely. It's live, interactive conversation. Don't so even have to spend the money on the gas to drive to the... Smithsonian. Yeah, for example. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Um, so we offer those um, every other month, and um, the one right now, like I said, is... is and there's uh, no charge for this? We... We have a charge of three dollars for our because members. Because I'm assuming that they're not gonna, the museum is not gonna. <laughs> some you know, they're losing. Some people, there is a fee sometimes for some of the programs depending on where it's coming from, and sometimes it's um, it's at no charge. Like the national parks, usually you can get a program from the national parks at no charge, and that's because that's what they do is they John's educate. It was phone, by the way, that was ringing. Not a train. Driving through it's it's a John's phone. Okay. <laughs> it reminds me, I'm church last Sunday. Yeah. Somebody's I sat in my usual back pew. I'm always in the very back pew. Okay. With good, the good Lutheran. I very know. back pew. We all we all do that, yes. And phones, people on phones to my left, people on phones to my right. On on the phone? Yeah. Oh. On their phone. Oh. Yeah. That's checking their emails, you don't do that sort of thing. Mm. I won't comment on that one. Nah, I just don't think that's right. Yeah. So. Leave the phone in the vehicle. Yeah. Or well, your purse. You know, maybe conversation at the council level maybe will be discussed. Only got a couple minutes left in the show, Mona. Some days the show isn't long enough. Today's one of them. Yeah. It's good to see that you guys are doing well financially, too, though, when I look at your financial report. Yep, our, our balance sheet. Um, we're, we're very happy with, um, you know, with our finances. As I said earlier, you know, we, we don't take any chances. We're, we're conservative. We don't spend what we don't have. Um, so our, our net income, you know, is in the, is in the black. That's so. what you want. 
Absolutely. We're not, we're not in it to get rich, but we don't want to, you know, spend what we don't have. So keeping it in the black is, is the goal, is the goal. And we have done that every year since I've been here. So pretty proud of that. There's a feather in your cap. Yeah, thank you. I was looking at the 2015 budget here, too. Interesting. So if you want to find those numbers, again, it's the 2015. 14 annual report of the Faribault Area Senior Citizens yep. Incorporated, yep. and people can absolutely stop in and pick up a copy if they're interested in a hard copy, or go online and um, they can take a peek at it online. So My guess it's, is it's, it's over at the library too. Oh, that's a great idea. I'll make sure it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. You'll have it there. We have it. They'll have it there. Again, tomorrow on AM Minnesota, we're going to visit the Murphys, uh, Lauren and Artie. And Erica Staub, and we'll talk about a fundraiser for the Hope Center. Yes, yep, that's cool. Be anxious to listen to that. You might even, you know, because the Bluebirding Conference has to be coming up here real soon. I think, that, I, think I saw a flyer on that in April. Mm -hmm. So, no, we can have a little side conversation with the Murphys. Maybe. They'll probably come back and talk about Bluebirds. Yeah, good. That concludes today's edition of AM Minnesota.